Hi, I'm Peg from the International Kitchen, and today we are going to make peachy pasta, which is a wonderful pasta from Tuscany. It has nothing to do with peaches. It is peachy, P-I-C-I, -I, pasta. You will sometimes see it called pinchy pasta as well, P-I-N-C-I, pinchy pasta. And it is a very, very simple pasta recipe that I love to eat whenever I'm in Italy and that you will see throughout Tuscany in particular. Pichi pasta is made with water and flour, so it is considered a poor pasta, a poor man's pasta. Um, a rich pasta would be one that incorporates egg, which was an ingredient that was more reserved for the wealthy. Pichi pasta is found throughout Tuscany. It's um, got a long history, going back to the age of the Etruscans, who lived in Italy, in central Italy, thousands of years ago. So how do you make peachy pasta? It's very easy. First, you need a kitchen scale. If you don't have a kitchen scale, please buy one. You can get one for $15 or $20, and um, it's incredibly useful to have, especially if you're um, trying to do recipes that you've learned on one of our culinary tours, because a lot of Europeans use weight measurement, whereas we might use volume measurement. Now, fortunately, my scale will weigh in grams or ounces, makes it especially useful. So here we have 500 grams of flour. And we're going to just put it on the table in a big pile. And then form a well in the center. This is pretty much how you start any homemade pasta recipe. Make sure your hands are clean. Next, you take 250 grams of warm water. This is a bit more than 250 grams. I always like to have a little bit extra on hand. Um, depending on the day, you might need a little more, a little less. Depending on the flour, you might need a little more or a little less. Pour that in there. We'll add a bit of salt, which can just kind of get sprinkled over the top in the center. It all gets mixed in. Here we have our flour and our water, and now it's time to start incorporating them together. Take a fork and you're just going to start mixing. If some of it spills out, it's no big deal. You're gonna just start mixing the flour into, into the middle. Once you get to a stiff enough dough, you can lose the fork and start using your hands. You do want it to be stiff enough that it doesn't make a complete sticky mess. That looks pretty good. Again, pulling more of the flour, pulling more of the flour as you need it, bit by bit. Will you use all the flour? Probably not. Again, it depends on the day. When your hands start to get sticky, just add a little more flour. Kneading is very therapeutic. I think everybody has their own style of kneading. I tend to use the flat of my hand, of one hand, while rotating with the other hand, at least for this type of dough. If I'm making bread, a big, bread, a big loaf of bread, I might use a more vigorous two-handed knead. I might also slap it on the table. 
still kneading. It takes a while. Peachy pasta are so easy. They can be made by children. I taught my kids to make peachy pasta when they were about maybe four or five years old. I would make the dough, but they would help me roll them. In fact, I taught one of my children's preschool teachers to make them, and she would make them every Friday with her preschoolers, and then they would share it together as a snack. It's a lot of fun. It's delicious easy. Plus, like I said, kneading is one of those things that I think is good for you. So I've been kneading the dough for probably about seven or eight minutes. Um, it's gotten nice and supple and just feels great. It's slightly, it has a slight tack to it, but it's definitely not sticky. Um, just really nice, nice feeling dough. You need to set it aside covered with cling wrap for about 20 or 30 minutes. So peachy pasta can be finished and dressed in pretty much any way any pasta can be. Some traditional methods are with a simple tomato and garlic sauce that's quickly made up in a skillet. Um, with a ragu, uh, a traditional meat sauce, sort of like a bolognese. A, um, with game, a nice game sauce with wild boar if you have access to that. Um, or duck ragu, it's excellent. Um, any type of uh, simple preparation, even with just butter and Parmesan, or butter and sage and Parmesan with pesto. Um, you can pretty much dress it however you want. I have found also um, through just good luck that it makes an excellent chicken noodle soup. You can use these noodles in your chicken noodle soup, best chicken noodle soup ever. You can find the recipe on our website, theinternationalkitchen.com. So two of my favorite preparations of peachy pasta are traditional Tuscan preparations. One is al aglione. Um, aglio means garlic, so al aglione means uh, with a garlic sauce. It's a garlic and cherry tomato sauce made very quickly and simply in a skillet. Um, and we learned that from Chef Silvia of our Cooking Under the Tuscan Sun culinary vacation. It's a fabulous trip. She's an amazing chef. And then we also like to make it um, with a subo finto. Uh, which we learned from Chef Andrea of our Living the Real Tuscan Dream Tour. And um, what we learned from Chef Andrea is that the subo fint or fake sauce, it's again a, a poor person's, what they back in the day would have called a poor person sauce um, for people who didn't have access, didn't have the funds to have access to meat on a daily basis. Um, they couldn't make a real subo, which would traditionally have had meat, so they made this subo finto with vegetables and whatever other ingredients really they could find. But again, it's a, it's a type of tomato sauce. Also very delicious, goes great with peachy pasta. Um, whether you're sitting in the Chianti Hills, enjoying it, um, overlooking the vineyards, which would be ideal, or if you're just enjoying it in your own home with your own family. <laughs> 